Hey guys, welcome back to yet another Remnant 2 video. Today we're continuing our New Game Apocalypse Archetype Ranking Series, where we look at each of the archetypes starting loadouts on a brand new character, and test it against roughly the first hour of an Apocalypse run. After defeating the first boss I encounter during the run, I give a score to the archetype based on the three most important aspects of a character. Effectiveness, Fashion, and Fun Factor. If you haven't seen Part 1, I recommend starting there, since I give a more thorough explanation as to what exactly I'm basing these scores on. But in short, effectiveness is how well a character performs, fashion is how good the character looks while at blue equip weight, and fun factor is how much fun I had while playing. And before I begin, just a few quick reminders. This score does not consider endgame effectiveness of an archetype. This is only about a brand new character starting from scratch on the hardest difficulty. If you'd like my thoughts on how well an archetype can perform under the best of conditions, let me know down in the comments below, and I don't know, maybe I'll do a separate series on it if there's enough interest. These tests are not performed equally across all characters. Some characters will start in different worlds as others, and therefore will encounter different challenges. Some characters simply perform better under different circumstances, but it's important to capture that randomness factor that is core to the Remnant experience. And of course, everything in this video is purely from my point of view, and is just my opinion. I play a lot of Remnant, so what's good for me is not necessarily good for you. Okay, so with all that out of the way, let's move on to the first archetype of this video. The Challenger is the third archetype we're covering in this series. And to put it plainly, their starting loadout is exceptionally good. They start with the Bulldog Shotgun and Silverback Revolver, along with the Iron Greatsword for their melee weapon. They get the Bruiser Armor set, and their starting ability is War Stomp. War Stomp is a pretty strong, cone-shaped attack that can clear out groups of enemies in front of you. You get two charges, and it has a short cooldown. So this ability is a great way to deal damage and conserve ammo. It can also go through walls, giving you a safe option to thin out large groups of enemies. Unfortunately, the range is a bit shorter than it seems like it should be, so there's a bit of a learning curve when it comes to using it effectively. Also, there's some moments where the shockwave can straight up miss for some reason. Overall, War Stomp is a pretty damn good ability, and I like it a lot. The prime perk for the Challenger is Die Hard, which basically gives you an extra free life with a 10 minute cooldown. This perk is the reason to pick the Challenger for most players, myself included. If you're planning a hardcore run, then the Challenger is a no-brainer. Just keep in mind, it doesn't protect against instant kill attacks from certain enemies. Using our starting cash, we're going to pick up Leto's Amulet and Black Cat Band. Leto's Amulet is pretty expensive, but it will allow us to do more with our starting armor. The Black Cat Band is probably unnecessary here since we have Die Hard, so I would actually recommend first getting Dran Scavenger Ring for the extra health regeneration. To get our armor to blue equip weight, We'll take off our helmet, swap our pants to the survivor leggings, and swap our gloves to the elder gloves. Thanks to Leto's amulet, we can maintain a pretty high armor value, and our character looks great. Damn. When it comes to starting mods, I had two choices in mind for the challenger, healing shot or concussive shot. On the one hand, concussive shot excels in close range encounters, and has pretty good stopping power, giving it a lot of synergy with our existing loadout. On the other hand, our character will likely take a lot of damage. Since we'll be spending most of our time in close range combat, Healing Shot will give us a nearly infinite source of healing, which will make up for arguably our only real weakness. I ultimately decided on Concussive Shot, which was the wrong decision. On my Hardcore Apocalypse run, I started as the Challenger and picked up Healing Shot as my starting mod. It was a much better option and saved my ass countless times, so yeah, just pick Healing Shot. Moving on to weapons. The starting long gun for the Challenger is the Bulldog. The Bulldog is an automatic shotgun with a 12 round magazine and decent damage at the right range. If you can get in close, aim for the head, this thing can make short work of smaller enemies. The Bulldog however has two pretty major flaws. The first of course being its rather short range and high spread. This means you'll frequently deal only partial damage, which is pretty underwhelming. The second flaw is its rather low stopping power. Smaller enemies will usually only flinch from headshots, and you'll need to hit larger enemies non-stop just to get any reaction from them. This is obviously a big problem for a gun that basically requires enemies to be up in your face for you to use it effectively. The Bulldog is not a bad gun. 
and in fact, it's pretty fun to use against groups of weaker enemies. But as a starting weapon for the Challenger, the Bulldog is in a weird position where it's a worse option than both War Stomp and the Iron Greatsword. Moving on to the handgun. The Challenger starts with the Silverback Revolver, and this thing is pretty damn good. It has long range, high damage, and nearly perfect accuracy. The rate of fire is a little slow, but it's still quite reasonable, especially if you can keep enemies at a distance. And unlike the Bulldog, the stopping power is quite good. Great even, for a handgun. It has a 5 round capacity, which, let's be real, it should probably be 6. And the only real downside to this weapon is its awful reload speed. The Silverback is quite simply a great handgun, and can easily work for the entirety of the game. And now, on to the melee weapon. The Challenger starts with the Iron Greatsword, and this thing is fantastic. It deals high damage, has large, sweeping swings, and synergizes incredibly well with War Stomp. In a pinch, this sword even works quite well against stronger enemies and bosses. And not to point out the obvious, but it just looks damn cool, and I'm all about that. The boss of this run was Gwendol. I was worried about how well the Challenger would perform here, considering this boss is about landing precise shots against her bombs. But the high spread of the Bulldog actually made it quite easy to do. Also, the strong melee weapon and war stomp made short work of the adds. So with all that being said, it's time to review and give a score to the Challenger. First up is effectiveness. The Challenger nearly has it all. Strong weapons, a solid ability, and arguably the best prime perk in the game. If you pick up Healing Shot as your starting weapon mod, then the Challenger is easily an 8 out of 10 for effectiveness. It would be a 9 out of 10 if War Stomp didn't randomly miss, or if the Bulldog had a little more stopping power. Next up is Fashion, and just look at it. Does it really get much better than this? This is an easy 9 out of 10. Lastly, we have Fun Factor. The Challenger is a blast to play as. The weapons are fun, War Stomp is fun, and Die Hard allows you to play a little more dangerously. Reloading the Silverback is probably the least fun part of the Challenger, which is honestly not a big deal. So it's no surprise I'm giving the Challenger a whopping 9 out of 10 for Fun Factor. This gives the Challenger an overall score of 26 out of 30, making it currently the highest scoring archetype in this series so far. The fourth archetype we'll be covering is the fan favorite, the Handler, aka the good boy archetype. You start with the dog companion, who cannot die and is generally meant to act like a pseudo co-op player. This is currently the only archetype in the game that gives you a permanent companion. They start with the Black Maw Assault Rifle, the Tech 22 Machine Pistol, and the Rusted Claws for their melee weapon. They get the Trainer Armor Set and start with the ability Guard Dog. Guard Dog is an ability that has a lot to it. Just by having the ability equipped, it grants a passive boost to your damage resistance and causes the dog to generate more threat. It then also has three different ways to activate the ability depending on how you press the button. A single press sends your dog to attack enemies near your mouse target. A double press will call the dog back to you, and a press and hold will activate a temporary buff that further increases your damage resistance and causes the dog to generate even more threat. The handler abilities are the only ones in the game that function like this. I personally didn't find this ability all that helpful, as the dog generally did a good job of attacking targets on its own. But it's a good option to have if you want to micromanage your dog, or really need that temporary damage resistance. The prime perk for the handler is Bonded, which allows the dog to revive you with a 2 minute cooldown. I don't have any footage to show because I didn't need to be revived, but I'll give my thoughts on it anyways. Now at first glance, this seems like a pretty strong perk. And yes, the dog being able to revive you can be helpful, but unlike the Challenger perk Die Hard, this revive comes with some caveats. Caveat number one, the dog can't be downed. The dog can and will go down quite often on Apocalypse difficulty, and likely it will go down before you do. Caveat number two, the dog uses one of your relic charges to perform the revive. If you don't have any relic charges, you don't get revived, and there's a good chance the reason you're downed in the first place is because you ran out of healing. So, generally speaking, Bonded is fine, but don't count on it to save your hardcore character. Now, to get this armor set to the blue equip weight, the optimal choice is to remove the pants. But this looks dumb as hell, so just remove the chest instead. You lose a little bit of armor, but the difference is so small it doesn't even really matter. For rings, I went with Black Cat Band and Drayan Scavenger Ring. 
Black Cat Band because, like I said before, I can't really rely on a dog to save me, and Dran Scavenger Ring for that small but very useful health regeneration. For the starting weapon mod, I went with Hot Shot. To be honest, none of these options really synergize with the handler's loadout, so I just went with Hot Shot for some extra DPS. However, Healing Shot does have some extra value with the handler, and I'll touch on that later. Moving on to weapons. The starting long gun for the handler is the Black Maw Assault Rifle. If there's one word to describe this gun, that word is decent. Decent damage, decent accuracy, decent rate of fire, decent 38 round magazine, decent stopping power, and decent reload speed. The Black Maw doesn't really excel in any particular way, but is perfectly suitable for every situation. As for the handgun, the handler starts with the Tech 22 machine pistol. This thing is an absolute bullet hose. You can point it at a smaller group of enemies within range and watch them get torn to shreds, especially if you keep the crosshair glued to their head. But as soon as something bigger shows up and you're stuck with just the Tech 22, you'll be wishing you had something that packs a stronger punch. The melee weapon for the handler is the Rusted Claws, and these things are pretty okay. They do pretty decent damage and seem to frequently land headshots. They have some weird tracking that can cause them to miss sometimes, and a pretty short attack range. But it's very satisfying to punch someone's head off. Now let's talk about the dog itself. The dog doesn't do a lot of damage, but he does do some damage and it's free. More importantly, he inflicts bleed on enemies. If you didn't know already, bleed causes damage over time, which is nice, but bleed also reduces healing effectiveness received by the target. This is essentially a hard counter to bosses that have Regenerator. Regenerator is far and away the hardest boss modifier on Apocalypse difficulty, as it can essentially triple the effective health a boss has. The dog won't be able to hit every boss, but the ones he can hit will be made much easier. Now of course the biggest draw about the dog is its ability to tank, and it does a pretty decent job of doing so even on Apocalypse difficulty. You can even use Healing Shot to keep your dog going for longer. Which is nice, but remember to save one for yourself. The boss of this run was Legion, and the fight was pretty okay. The dog did a great job of dealing with the adds, but frequently went down due to the boss attack or some adds exploding. But it was easy enough to bring him back using Healing Shot and let him do his thing. So with all that being said, let's review and give a score to the handler. First up is effectiveness. The handler feels like an archetype with the training wheels still attached. Everything in its kit feels perfectly adequate, but I found myself wishing I had more to work with. Still, it's hard to deny that the handler is an effective archetype right from the get-go. So I'm giving this one a solid 8 out of 10 for effectiveness. Next up is fashion. Now if you go with the optimal equipment decision and remove the pants, then it's a 1 out of 10. Sorry, I'm just not a fan of the adult diapers look. If you instead remove the chest, keep the pants, it looks pretty decent. With the pants on, I'm giving it a 6 out of 10 for fashion. And finally, we have fun factor. And I'm just gonna say it, I didn't really have a lot of fun as the handler. The Black Maw is about as vanilla as you can get for a weapon. I prefer weapons with more punch or more specific use cases. The dog is effective and nice to have, but I would much rather have something like Die Hard that enables me to play more recklessly, or Quick Draw that gives me those big numbers I crave like a drug. So for those reasons, I'm giving the handler a 5 out of 10 on the fun factor scale. This gives the handler an overall score of 19 out of 30, a pretty mid score for a pretty mid experience. And that's going to do it for this video. If you like the video and want to see this series continued, please drop a like and let me know down in the comments below. You guys really came through for me on part 1. It's been 2 weeks since I posted that video, and it's still going strong and has the most likes of any video on my channel. I have another video I'm planning on first before starting part 3 of the series, so thank you for your patience and stay tuned. I quickly want to shout out another Remnant 2 video I recently uploaded. In the video, I attempt to beat Remnant 2 while staying at level 1. Here's a small clip from it. <laughs> come on, motherfucker! Come on, motherfuckers, come on! Come on, motherfuckers, come on! So, if that interests you, 
I'll have the link shown at the end of this video and in the description below. For some reason, YouTube won't promote it and I'm kind of depressed about it, honestly. It really, really sucks that I spent weeks working on it. And I think, hey, I did a pretty good job. But then YouTube just decides nobody's going to see it. So I would greatly appreciate if you would check it out and maybe drop a like if you think it's good. Anyways, I'm sorry about the micro rant. Again, I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.